Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, let's continue. So the next uh, 40 minutes or 30 minutes, follow, follow my lead, guys. Follow my lead. Uh, where are we? Let's get back to where we are. So a minute, let me get my notes ready. Uh, here are my notes and also my MT4. So guys, uh, we are on GU, GU guys. So uh, what, what I'm doing today, I'm basically showing you a very simple way that you can always be able, before we continue with the technical, I think for technical analysis right now, we have done support and resistance. And then uh, next week we'll be adding moving average and also we'll be adding candlestick trading and also a little bit of momentum. So for today, this is what I really wanted us to cover, sentiment analysis. But as we do sentiment analysis, there are some sites I want you to take uh, understanding, like this one, called timingcharts.com. And then there's something else we call the COT report on baby pips. So this is also something else we're going to touch today. So this mostly is a class I usually do by the end of the, 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 end of the training, but I want you guys to understand it so that you always know what is happening because most of the guys don't know what is happening. They are always you know, entering and getting out. So guys follow through. So today I'm on sentiment analysis. So I only have two, yeah, so this is what I am. So let's do the theory. Then now we come to the practical bit. So guys, uh, this is my chart. So I'll be using M30 and I'll also be using one hour chart. So uh, let me share my screen. Have I shared my screen? Oh yeah, let me share my screen. So guys, here we are. So give, give me your time and at least you'll be able to learn something. So let's continue. So this is sentiment analysis. It's something most guys don't uh, learn. So what is it all about? So now, last time we did CHF. I hope you've been following guys because I want you to always be following especially what we'll be doing. Last time we did uh, the whole of economy of Switzerland. Then we looked at their exports, we looked at their imports, we looked at their trade balance. We also looked at the pair and how strong it is. And uh, as at the chart, I've shown you guys, this is where we are. So let me put this down here so that at least I can be able to navigate faster. So a minute guys, yeah, around down here. I think down here is okay or just around here. Yeah, so let's continue. So this was my CHF. And the reason why, what I'm doing, I am using uh, sentiment plus when I'm, when I'm trading this Swiss, Swiss franc yen, I am using sentiment. I'm also using support and resistance. And I'm also using two of fundamental. The reason, the reason why I'm using the three of them is because, a minute guys. Around there, so the, is is because I need to get the right the right thing, or I need to get the price. Because most guys are, of course, are always trading on price action. Okay, just a minute, guys. System today is misbehaving. Um, one minute. Okay, it's good now. So. Stay there. So this is what I was talking about. And the reason is when I zoom out, this is what I'm able to see. I've also drawn the red lines. This becomes my strong support up here. I mean, strong resistance, my support down here, and also another support. So you can see, guys, what I was talking about. I hope you guys can see. You can see what I was talking about. This is on four hours. Four hours already, you can see we are at a very strong oversold position. Oh, what's wrong with this? Minute, guys. I think that's okay. So this is Swiss franc, Swiss franc yen. So today we are not going to touch Swiss franc yen. Today I've said we are going to touch GBP USD. So let me get back my GBP USD. So this is my GBP USD. So that's where we are on one hour chart, 30 minutes. So for GU, I'll be tracking it using one hour and four hour chart. So that's how my GU looks like as at the moment. Then I can also check D1 later on. But right now I'm really interested in the one hour. Between now and the end of the day, what will be happening? So there's very low volume, as you guys can see. There's too much volume. I also have this indicator called better volume. But this one usually just tracks where the volume is. So let's go to the theory first. Then uh, we are going to touch the practical later. So okay, that's better. Uh, 
Okay. So this is sentiment analysis, guys. Oh, sorry, sorry. So it's gauge to use how traders feel, whether about the overall currency market or about a particular pair. So first of all, we need to feel. Now, most guys, when they are coming on the market, they have no idea what basically the market is all about. It's either they enter, buy, or sell, and it's done. It's like literally you're gambling, meaning you don't know why the market is going up or why it's going down. Of course, most guys lean more on technical, the charts and all that. But they, let, they still don't understand what's happening on the fundamental. Fundamental is the, uh, the news aspect. And then now we have sentiment. Most guys don't even understand what sentiment is all about. So this is what I'm talking about. It's used to gauge how other traders feel, whether it's about the overall currency market or about a particular currency pair. Either we, either earlier we say the price action should theoretically reflect all that is there that is available in price. So minute guys. Okay, let's continue. So uh, the Forex market do not simply reflect all the information out there because uh, traders will just act the same way. Of course, that isn't how things work. So this is why sentiment analysis is important. Each trader has his or her own opinion of why the market is acting the way it does and whether they tra to trade the same direction of the market or against it. It's just like Facebook. What is it all about? It's a complex network of made up of individuals who want to spam our news feeds. Anyway, kid you. The market basically represents what all traders you are in Buffett selling from the donut shop feel about the market. So this is each trader's thoughts and opinions. So let me cancel this. Uh, admit, yes, welcome. So that at least, uh, uh, okay, guys, I think we are good now. Yeah, let's continue. This is what it's all about. Then the problem is that you cannot move, no matter how strongly you feel a uh, market is moving in a certain way, you cannot move it in your, own, in your own favor. Even if you believe the dollar is going up, but everyone else is bearish, there's nothing much you can do. So guys, a minute, uh, put this off. Okay, so as a trader, all you have to do, take into consideration, you need to perform sentiment analysis. So this is what I'm showing you guys today. It's up to you to gauge how to gauge how the market is feeling, whether it's bullish or bearish, whether you have to decide how you want to incorporate your perception of the market sentiment into a trading strategy is all on you. So anyway, this is what one idea is that everyone or almost anyone shares the same sentiment. So somehow you realize some when market is buying, most guys, you have to go further and find out. So this is one thing I want you guys to know. Another idea is that most guys lose, unfortunately, suck, depending on statistics. Between 70 to 80% retail traders lose money. So this is the this is this is very, very alarming. 70 to 80% are losing the money. So if you know that these are unprofitable traders who are usually long, currently long, why would you be looking at these statistics? Or why would you be looking at what they are saying? So anyway, let's go and find out which one is best. So guys, a minute. Then uh so I have this site ready, and also I have another one ready here. So there are only two sites I'm going to show you. So there is this one. So I'll also talk a little bit on COT, it's because COT helps us to also gauge the sentiment. So let's go back to sentiment. It helps us gauge the sentiment of what the market is feeling or where the market is going. So a minute, guys. So we are back here. So technical analysts involve powering charts over to identify patterns or trends. Fundamental analysis involves powering economic data. This is the data we have. So we have said we are checking this week and we should be trading, we should be trading NFP. So what NFP is all about, here it is. Eh? You guys can see non farm payroll. When I click on this, it's basically showing how many jobs were created. So or how many how many jobs were added the last month in the US economy. So, so let's finish on theory first. So we have say technical involves pouring over charts to identify patterns or all trends. Fundamental analysts involves pouring over economic reports and news headlines. So hardcore traders usually will say fundamental analysis doesn't matter. FU to FA, it's already embedded in the price, which you can see on the charts. Hardcore traders 
in the fundamental analysis, we'll say technical analysis is just a bunch of marginal lines and drawings. Useless fake voodoo. Anyway, while folks in the sentiment analysis camp are observing the two camps fight and monitoring the level of sentiments. So what the sentiment analysis analysts are doing, they're just weighing down. We need to weigh down. What are these guys doing? What are these other guys doing? And where is, is our secret spot? That secret spot is what basically we are looking at to be able to always gauge our entry. Fortunately, the different types of market analysis complement each other. So that's one thing I want you guys to know. Somehow they all complement each other. So even hardcore technical traders will find will find useful fundamental nuggets that can help with technical traders and vice versa. In real world markets, prices are constantly changing. So you guys know this price is constantly changing over and over and over again. You can see it keeps changing. So let's put a four hour chart because the reason is I want to know where the best entry is on GU. GU is one of my favorite pairs. I really love GU. So this means that trends in prices affect fundamentals just as fundamentals affect price. And as you'll find out in later lessons, identifying trends is a huge part of technical analysis. Anyway, don't be fooled by this one-sided extremist one is not better than the other. So at the end of the day, you should trade based on the type of analysis you are most comfortable and profitable with. So this is one of the most important things. So I would tell you to use technical or fundamental sentiment, but me, I combine most of the three. To recap, this technical is a study of price movement on the charts. Fundamental is how the economy is doing, reports, all these NFP, oh, this should open. So guys, wait, let, let me get the data for, for oh, it's, it's open. Good, 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 good. So a minute, guys, because I need us to focus on this week, apart from what we are doing today. So uh, is it? Uh, so, Fundamental factors shape sentiment while technical analysis help visualize the sentiment and apply a framework. So all, all we need to know every now and then before you put your trade, all we need to know is the market bullish, is it bearish or is it ranging on which time frame? Which time frame are you using? So, and of course you look at the historical price action and economic figures, they are all there. All you have to do is put your thinking cap and you're good to go. So. Let me not waste much time because I want us to go to theory. I mean, practical. So, so I think this one we are done. So now let's go to the real thing. So sentiment is basically visualizing. So let's visualize our charts. So before I go to, yeah, it's good now. So uh, you can see I have March, June, September, October. Then we have COT here then I think I'll use six months. So I can use, uh, so I have to move this to the side. So guys, you can see, so this is Euro. So the blue line represents the hedges. These are the big corporations and then the green line represents speculators. The red line are the retail traders. So every time the green line is above, we are bullish. Then the, the center line is there, is the retail traders. So I can check one month. So this is the, my future, Euro, Euro. Now, Euro FX futures. I'm talking of all the Euros. So when I go to one month, this is what I see. This is three months. So we can still, we are at 1.195. Then I can go back to my chart and check what's happening to my Euro. So, so it's good guys. So this is now I'm performing sentiment analysis on Euro. So this is my Euro, my Euro on four hours. This is my Euro on one hour. So you can see there's too much consolidation. Guys can see from here, there has been too much consolidation, too much consolidation. This is a lot. So now because of this too much consolidation on the Euro, I'll go to four hours. You can see also on the four hours, I've drawn all my support resistance is still too much consolidation. Then I'll go to D1. So D1 now can be able to show me what is happening because you can see it fell down, didn't actually come. And then it also was on an oversold point here. So guys, you can see there was an oversold point here. Then you can even go to weekly. So weekly, you can also be able to see it's still not very visible, but between four hours 
and, uh, and the daily, at least we can be able. So right now, as I was telling you guys, you can see the market has been oversold for a very long time after what happened. And this can, you can track using the one hour and the four hour chart. So for the Euro, we still wait. If the job reports will be good, of course, what will happen? The dollar will gain. If, if there'll be less jobs, the dollar will lose. So this is what we are looking at. The non-farm payroll. You, you can see now here we are expecting uh, how many? 700. Last time we added half, half a million jobs. So they are expecting, uh, this is the last time, this is the, uh, the forecast, then the actual. So we have to wait for the actual number here to be able to know, did we add more jobs or less job? Also the average hourly earnings. So now these ones, we are looking at how much guys are earning per hour. Then we are also looking at, uh, so this, this will be doing practically on Friday, 3 p.m. So I hope guys will be online because this is usually so much fun. Unemployment rate. So we are, we are checking, has unemployment increased or has it decreased? If of course unemployment has decreased, that is good for the dollar. If unemployment rises, of course that is bad for the dollar. So anyway, this was timing charts. And then also this now, I do I have time guys, let's see here, yeah, I think I have time. So let me also show you, so this is now the COT report. So the COT report, we have to check futurely, like six months or one year. So this is my, let, let, let me load it. So this is my one year chart for the Euro FX futures. So guys, you can see, this is, oh, there's error. Okay, okay, okay. So if you don't have this, you can use another one called barchart.com. So, so this one too can give you whatever chart I'm, 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 I'm trying because this one seems to be a bit down. So anyway, for the charts, you can also get this barchart.com and you can also get it on the app. So let me go to the most important thing I wanted to tell you guys today, this COT. This COT helps us to be able to know basically where the positions are for the long-term guys and the short-term guys. So in the next five, six minutes, guys follow through uh, because this is what I'll be sharing with you how to find it here. So guys, uh, it's a bit mathematical, but this one I'll follow up with you guys on the WhatsApp group, but just follow. So I don't know if these ones have opened because all we need to know between now and Friday, who are going long and who are going short on every, so this is where you get it. So just write, I think it's under market sentiment. You guys can see under baby pips, you'll find it under market sentiment. Then you'll see after, so this is now sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis, you have to incorporate it with the COT report. And then you have to incorporate it also with the fundamental. Fundamental is basically looking at this uh, economic calendar. Every week, this should be always beside your computer so that you always know where the markets are going. So let's go and read the COT report. So you'll find it here. This is the website I was looking at, WWCFTC something. So let me open it. So all we need to know, so a minute guys, I'm still opening. Yeah, so this is what I was looking at. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. So a minute. So I'm looking at finance. So it has all the assets, classes, and instruments, like agriculture, petroleum, and all the, all the rest. But I need this one. This one written financial. So I'll click here. Traders in financial futures, futures only. Traders in financial futures, futures and options combined. So I only need the futures. So we'll go to the long format. So... This is a bit uh, advanced guys, but just follow. Because now I'm looking at my Euro and I'm also looking at my cable or my pound. So, so here it is guys. So, so I'm looking at, so here they are, traders in financial futures only position as of June 22nd, 2022. So that should have been by Friday. So you can see, this is what I'm looking at. This is Canadian dollar. This is uh, Swiss franc. So Swiss franc, what you do, you look at the dealer, you look at how many positions are long. So yeah, that was by Tuesday. So one week ago, these were the positions these guys were holding. So in the next two minutes, let me show you. 
So now we, all you need is the British pound sterling. Here it is. You can see positions. Sorry, guys. Positions long, short for the dealer. Uh, changes. Open interest. This is the most important thing you need to check on COT. Open interest represented by each category of trader. So what we are looking at, we need to know for the big guys and small guys who are holding uh, a lot. Open interest is guys who are not long or short. So here you can see 18.733 and then 0. Point, so we are done with the dealer. This is the asset manager. These are the big guys. So how much are they low holding on long? 43,000. I'm seeing 48,000 short changes. Then open interest, I'm seeing 25.8, 28.2. Then leverage funds, these are the hedge funds, the blue line. Guys, this is, here is where you need to pay attention. So you can see they are long. These are the billionaires and the institutions. They are long on 48, with 48,600. These are the, all the, the long trades, the short trades 24. Then open interest is 28. So you can see they have a lot of open interest on long. And then you can see short, they are 14 point. The other reputables, these ones are not so much. So the idea is we can see here there is a lot of, you know, uh, they, they are looking at cable. So I'll just look at the cable for today with the, my COT. Then now you can see on my cable, that's what I was saying, guys, most likely now we can see a confirmation when of, they are oversold. And there is a lot of interest, open interest with the institutions. So most likely, I don't think this trend might change anytime soon. And also you can see with my volume here, I'm on the yellow bar. Yellow bar means this is low volume. So most likely I don't see much of this changing. For the Euro, let's check the Euro futures before time is up. Uh, let's check Euro. So Euro, this is British pound sterling. So you can also check Euro. Here's the Euro guys, the next two minutes. Euro, you can see institution dealer, we need leverage, 52,000 long, then short 68,000. So that means we are at a 50-50 point. That's why you have seen the euro why I was telling you guys, even on H1, you can see there's too much consolidation. So that means we have not gotten enough interest for guys to go long or short. So that's why you're seeing 52, they are long, 68. So most guys are short on the euro. So the reason is we are waiting for the news on Friday. The rest long at 19, short. You can see these ones, dealers are 457. So the reason is euro is one of the most traded uh, instruments. So look at the asset manager for 48 long. So you can see the asset guys, they are up. So this is also important. So for me, I'll still hold on this one because you can see now the long here on the on the institutions, they are 448,000 and the open interest is 64.6. So the reason I'm showing you this data, this data will always help you to know where everyone has taken their position. And once you know where everyone has taken their position, you can always come back and be able to know where to take your position. So at least today, I think I've introduced you to timing charts. I've shown you how it works. I've also introduced you to bar chart and also COT. So I think guys will continue on this because of time, uh, unless there are any question. Any question guys? I didn't have much for today. Uh, minutes. Uh, any question guys? So any questions? I think uh, for today, this was the match we would have done.